Yeah, welcome back. With 75 days to the 2023 elections, the All Progressives Congress, APC, appears to be uncomfortable with the insistence by the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, to deploy by model voter accreditation system, BVAS, and the INEC election results viewing portal uh, for the elections. Both the BVAS and the IREV were introduced by the electoral body to promote the credibility of the electoral process. BVAS is a technological device used to identify and accredit voters' uh, fingerprints and facial recognition before voting. The device is also used for capturing images of the polling unit result sheet from uh, EC8A and uploading the image of the result sheet online. IREV, on the other hand, is an online portal where polling unit level results are uploaded directly from the polling unit, transmitted and published for the public. At the front end of the online portal, members of the public can create personal accounts with which they can gain access to all uploaded results stored as PDF files. And that means it's a strategic move to make sure that no uh, voting can be done by people who should not be done and people who should do the voting actually get the voting done. A recent statement by the national chairman of the APC, Senator Adamu Abdullahi, uh, may have uh, justified a Guinness claims. Uh, Adamu said uh, he expressed strong reservations over the deployment of modern technology in the next year's general election, and that's the concern that we have today. The APC chairman made these views known when he received a delegation from the Commonwealth pre-election team at the National Secretariat of the party in Abuja, and he was of the opinion that the federal government was yet to give Nigerians stable electricity, adding that it would be a gamble to allow electronic transmission of results. And that's what we're discussing today. Um, how Beavers and IREV has unsettled parties and the game changer heading to the 2023 election. And so we have joining us to discuss this, Mr. Charles Otu, political analyst, and also Mr. Abiodun Shoumi. Gentlemen, welcome to the run-up. It's my pleasure. Thanks for having me. Okay. Uh, good, uh, good morning. Um, let me start with Mr. Shoumi. Um, there seem to be, even though we are restricting ourselves now to the APC, but this BVAS and IREV seems to have uh, upset the uh, political terrain, as it were. Uh, why do you think that is? Mr. Shoumi, please. Yes, I can hear you. Okay. Now, one thing which um, we all need to do is when you are introducing new technology, something that has never been used before in our country to conduct a general election, it is just right for people to be concerned given the nature of our infrastructure, particularly technological infrastructure within the country. A country where you want to make a call, you can end up you know, having to try two, three times um, in some parts of the country. While at times you sell the data, it does not go gets through in time and you know you keep waiting for it to deliver. So we have our infrastructures to that would the technology that will underpin, you know, what the beavers, you know, seems to be resting on a weak infrastructure. So therefore, anybody, not just the APC, should be concerned about it. Let me give you a good example. Um, the current ongoing case in the tribunal in Oshun State, where the former governor, Oyetola, you know, is challenging the victory of the current governor, um, Adelike, Jackson Adelike, of the PDP, one of the things claimed the deposition of INEC itself, not APC, not PD, is that the first results they announced the, that it didn't contain the full accreditation information, which it should have, that it, it failed to upload in full. This has been submitted to the tribunal. And you can then imagine why people will not be worried about it. And that led INEC 
into first satisfying a result, satisfying uh, 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 the details of um, uh, beavers for APC, which they used to file the case, only for INEC to come back and say, oh, we have just completed, the whole system has just fully uploaded, we are submitting a new one. And the tribunal is saying, on which, which one did you use to announce the result? Of course, the one given to APC. So you can see the confusion, the problem from day one. And that should be very worrying and concerning, not only to APC, you know, to all political parties. Number two, is what nobody has tested. There will be variations in the performance of uh, beavers. In these rural areas, we are likely going to have delayed um, transmission of results, and we are likely going to have more problems, as witnessed during um, when they use it for accreditation in the Anambra State election. They witnessed a similar thing. So Anambra State is also a good example where people, for instance, in Inewi local government area, they had major problems. In a family of five, only one person managed to get through at the same um, uh, 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 unit, when in reality, that they only had two beavers machines for the whole of Inewi local government. I understand, and I know the problem of um, the IPOP is there, uh, which militated against them, but that is not what affected the, te uh, the technology. So there are, there are genuine concerns. You may have a situation, for instance, where um, in um, Lagos, you have uh, the, the, the beavers perform excellently, you know, delivering 95%. And then you now go to somewhere, say, for instance, in, um, um, in Boronu, you know, to, or in Plato or somewhere else. And then you have 50% accreditation. So what would be the average percentage that would be acceptable you know, for beavers to be Because currently what I like to say is that no matter the situation, it is only beavers and nothing else. That is good. The intention is good. The intention is to eliminate tricking, eliminate fraud. But that does not mean that we should not look at the problems which has uh, been thrown up by the use of beavers currently, like in the case of Osho State and the problem they encountered in Anambra State. This is a wider election which will involve the whole country, and we need to make sure that the process is credible. INEC needs to make sure that they have a reliable infrastructure, and they cannot guarantee that it is only NCC. NCC has made it very clear that it's their responsibility to guarantee, you know, the uh, the, the, the technology, you know, to deliver uh, whatever INEC wants to achieve. So we need to get both agencies to cooperate and reassure the country. Um, that there will not be any problem. Otherwise, we will face major claims that Bivas was used, you know, to reduce the scores of people outside city centers, you know, to, uh, to the advantage of the ruling party or one party or the other. And that is not what we want. The election will not be seen to be free, fair, and credible. Mm. Uh, Mr. Otu, I uh, would like to hear your thoughts as well before we move on to other matters. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, uh, I listened uh, very keenly uh, to my brother during his postulation on a general note, uh, or his fears on the general note may seem founded, you know, but there is so, uh, something very peculiar about technology, and that is the need for constant improvement. Until the issues regarding the uh, staggered elections in uh, Anambra, Ekiti, and Oshun states. Uh, Nigeria never contemplated that there was a possibility for the improvements INEC has made on the on uh, the electoral system generally, including the introduction of uh, Beavers technology. People didn't believe it was possible. Now, where I differ very substantially with uh, Mr. Biodu is the fact that. If you are deploying this technology, just like your MTN network, your other networks that came in in the early 2000s, and it has witnessed significant improvement just within a period of less than two decades, or about two decades, rather, you, you, you cannot say, you cannot take away the fact that it is because it is in use that there were rooms for improvements. 
Now, if you look at generally the fears expressed by APC and different other parties about network issues and all of that, you, you will be wondering whether this really should be the case. These same individuals, these same uh, stakeholders, stay in their rural areas. They no longer carry money about. They do electronic transfer of money. They perform other functions that technology has afforded the nation and Nigerians to perform. So why is it that in the case of determining the fate of over 200 million Nigerians, it now becomes so problematic? There are 179,000, over 179,000 playing units across the country. If you record success in about 160,000 or 150,000 out of those playing units, whatever are the shortfalls can be remedied. INEC is not acting as if they are not oblivious of the fact that, look, Nigeria is, bef uh, is, you know, is uh, buffeted with all manner of um, electronic, uh, technical, uh, technological challenges, network issues here and there. That is why they have said, look, we are going to run this election, and it's not going to be like the normal election where you just have a day, like Nigerians have had it. You just have a day, you say it's over. If there are areas or places that will be need for improvement, INEC is going to study them. And elections can hold in those places when those issues that would have cropped up uh, cropped up may have been resolved or sorted out. Now, for me, the fear should be that we did not try this technology at all. The fear should be that Nigerians looked the other way and just said, oh, because we don't have networks in all the villages in the country, we didn't deploy the opportunities or we didn't have best opportunities afforded us by beavers. What is this beavers and the IREV about? Beavers just have to do with bimodal voter accreditation. That it is no more an error where you now cannot reconcile the number of ballot papers given to the number of ballot papers cast on election day because accreditation failed. With BFAS, you have all that, so, uh, so many other enhancements, facial recognition, um, thumb printing, and all of this technology, like I witnessed it during the Anabra election, does not take time. If there are hitches that are widespread, we can come back. I want Nigeria, there's a perspective I want Nigerians to see this election. It is about the fate of Nigeria in the next four to eight years because politicians sadly do four years this time. Anybody who goes in there wants to stay there for the next eight years, whether as a governor or as a president. Is this, or as a national assembly member, is this not important enough that we can even devote a time and say, if there are out of 179,000 people in this across the country, if we can get it right in 100,000 and we can defer elections, to the next day or next uh, few period, uh, next uh, a couple of weeks, to make sure that we use the opportunities afforded us by this technology and get credible candidates elected across board. Wouldn't, wouldn't that have solved the problem for Nigerians? That is where I'm thinking that this beavers, uh, the IRA, for instance, on the other hand, has to do with monitoring the results as they originate from the polling units. What that will solve is that in the case of Fortune, for instance, Adeleke knew he was leading the election. Even with some local governments not being turned in in Oshun State, Adeleke knew that with the results that have been monitored in the portal of INEC, they were already in a, the, the party was already in a clearly. All the issues are reports of shortfalls of the system, notwithstanding. What is good is that you can be sure of what is going on across the polling units. Just by logging into the INEC portal. We can improve on this, my dear brother. That's what I think. All right. Uh, you've gone ahead to mention, uh, you know, all the advantages that comes with the Beavers and the IREV uh, in a situation where it is actually successful. But then we've had other elections happen in the past where these uh, systems of uh, electronic transmission were tried out. Looking at 2023 coming up, do you think that you know these things put together and probably solved? Do you do you see it being successful in 2023? Yes, I, I believe strongly that um, if we are able to record 60 to 70 percent success, we are already in. We are already having the nation is already having an A, and it can be improved in subsequent elections. Where did we start from? We remember that in this country, there was a time we had an option A for election in 1993. 
and it was a, it was a judge the most fairest and the freest election, even though the acclaimed winner did not uh, take out of office. That is a late emperor, emperor Abiola. If we have moved from that in 1993 to the 1999 election, to the 2003-2007-2011 elections to 2015, and we are now in an era where even smaller countries with lesser uh, uh, funding, with less, lesser electoral funds, are now thinking about technologies that can enhance theirs. I believe that the 2023 election, if we put our hands to it, like I said earlier, commit ourselves to the fact that, look, we can spread this election, the whole of March and even April, and get it right across the National Assembly, across the uh, 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 28 out of the 36 states where election will be holding, elections will be holding, and then the presidential election. It is what the energy, the time, and the resources Nigeria is investing in it. And I don't want us to throw the baby away with the bathwater because we think the BIBAS and the IREV, uh, IREV, IREV technology will, dis will be unfavorable to some percentage of political parties or some part of the country. We, 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 we've seen how even the uh, you know, network, uh, network providers have improved over the years. The MTN network for crying out loud is less than two decades or just about two decades in Nigeria. And we've seen how it's been improved. If elections are run on a four, eight year cycle, it means that when we'll be talking about the elections in the year 2050, for instance, when some of us may have grown so old, we could get to the point where, like in the American, in the American system, it is no more people can pick their cards and cast their ballots whenever they wish and then go about their normal business. Mm. That is where we should be aiming instead of not trying at all. That's what I think. Mm. Instead of not trying at all, it's it's a, it's the optimism for me. Mm -hmm. I, I I like that you are very optimistic. But let, let me go to Mr. Shomi. Um, yes, the concerns you expressed. Uh, or the, the position you took that people who are concerned about what might happen are doing so are justified. Uh, but we have from now till the 25th of February, and for a technology that has been tried in both Osh in Oshun, Ekiti, and Anambra, uh, shouldn't this be a good time enough for INEC to put its house in order and learn the lessons that they need to learn to make sure that this technology works? Should we still be afraid until the time of election? Yes, um, I listened to Charles and um, I like his optimism and I wish things can uh, work out the way he thinks. Um, he's ignoring the fact that it's not a wish. Election is guided by the Electoral Act. The Electoral Act stipulated that all the elections must take place at the same time. So the idea of having a staggered election, uh, presidential election, is not going to happen, except to change the law. It is too late to change the electoral act. We need to understand that. The second issue is that we are also failing to take account of the fact that we only have less than 80 million Nigerians. Actually, they're talking about 67 million who have internet access. That will tell you that the uh, infrastructures, by this I mean masks, you know, to deliver um, uh, data and telephone services to people are only concentrated in areas where these 65 to 80 million people live. So what happens to the vast majority of the people, 120 million Nigerians, you know, living in the rural areas, in riverine areas, and in thick forests? How will they, you know, get involved in that very process in a way that Bivas will also work for them, like it will work for us, you know, in the city? Um, again, we are also ignoring one fact, the confusion and the suspicion and the allegations that will arise if you are to go by what happened in Oshun. In Oshun State, and I repeat, please go and read the INEX submission and the submission of um, uh, APC and PDP uh, before the tribunal. The case is still alive. INEC is saying that the, accredita uh, the BIVAS accreditation evidence, which they certified and gave to APC, which APC used and discovered that they were overvoting internal local governments in a way that if 
the Electoral Act is complied with, which clearly stipulated that where the votes are more than the number of uh, beavers accredited, then the result should be cancelled. That if the law is applied, then Adeleke would not have been declared, or Uchola would have been declared, uh, you know, as the government. And that is precisely why they're in court. And this case is still on, you know, and we are likely going to have, if we create a situation where in some areas you have maybe 10, 20 million voters badly affected out of two, uh, possible 80 million voters, what would happen? Are you going to declare results without taking account of the polling of those 20 million voters? Because we should not forget that people disenfranchised or people who are not able to vote using the beavers, if the beavers fail to work in the rural areas and the rural areas, their numbers must not exceed the margin of victory of any of the candidates. It will lead us to a new round of um, trouble. Don't forget the 2019 elections. Article came up, the PDP candidate in that election came up uh, with his own um, electronically transmitted results, and uh, this went to the tribunal, which eventually was rejected. So there are still a lot of uncertainty. What I am saying is, I am not saying we should reject the past. No, we have to use beavers. But we must accept the limitations of beavers given the level of our technological infrastructural development in the country. We must take account of people in the rural areas, people in the river Rhine areas, so that their votes also will count. We must make sure that they are able to vote. We cannot have an excuse that beavers fail you know, to function. Meanwhile, INEC has said that you cannot use any other means. So what basically it means is that if beavers fail to work in any area, all the people in that area will not vote. That is my own concern. And that is what I think INEC needs to look at. How will they be able to ensure efficient you know, and effective beaver system you know, when people are doing accreditation? Do not forget that the responsibility is not just INEC. It's NCC that claims they have full responsibility for that. And even then, I doubt it, because NCC will not buy the mast. It's the private telecom operators that will buy the mast, you know, install them, and link them to their system so that we can have an improved um, um, technological uh, infrastructure. So basically, what I am saying is that we still need to have more debates while we are you know, implementing BBAS have more debates, engage also the private sector partners, you know, in this debate and look at solutions to some of these foreseeable problems. That is the point I'm making. All right. You, 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 you know, you just mentioned how that if the beavers fails at certain areas, like the river Rhine areas and the, the rural areas, people are going to be disenfranchised and that also means that their numbers will be lost. Um, before now, where we used to have like if I'm to use the word analog elections, people will go out to vote. And there's been lots of cases of situations where people don't, do not even see electoral materials. They do not see uh, INEC staff. They don't see anything. And elections come and go, and people get into power, and life goes on. What I'm trying to say, where I'm going to with that is, um, do you not think that these conversations coming up in different quarters, especially among political parties, is so that INEX, you know, um, um, INEX efforts into trying to curb vote buying, to curb um, electoral misdoings, is cut down to the low? Because I mean, they, they've put in efforts, they've, they've brought, up, brought up these technological innovations and they are trying to put it in practice and they've made their reasons clear. And the people who are directly affected, who in fact should be excited and applauding these innovations are actually making these conversations and trying to make life difficult for both Nigerians and the electoral umpire. Do you not think that these people are actually trying you know, putting in their best effort to make sure that we don't have the credible election that we all look forward to come 2023. How do you react to that? Yeah, I make no doubt about it. I make has been working very, very hard, you know, to ensure that the process and the results of elections are credible, 
they are free, they are fair, and they are judged so, not only uh, by international observers, but are also seen by fellow Nigerians as you know, credible. Um, they have a huge body of knowledge spreading into, since 1999, uh, we've been conducting elections in the country, and uh, we've been trying to improve on the system, one way or the other. But this is the farthest we have gone so far. I admit, and I'm sure uh, INEC should be applauded you know, for the efforts you know, being made through BBAS to call uh, votes, um, um, what do they call it, to, to cut um, vote rigging and snatching of ballot boxes and all that. Those ones will be things of the past. We've seen a reduction in that since um, 2019. But I agree, most it needs to be done. But the fact of the matter is, when it comes to the, this very particular um, new technology, my own worry is more about um, the election appearing to be credible. At the end of the day, if one candidate wins, and then another candidate with strong support in rural areas or in riverine areas loses the election, that will spark another round of claim that INEC conspired to ensure that those machines will not work. This is Nigeria. This is how our people think. But rather than allow for that, my own submission is that, is it not better for INEC to assess the state of technology, the infrastructure in the country, and then agree that, look, in Maybe it's in 60% of the country where the infrastructure is good, BVAS will apply. In areas where we have weak infrastructure to support BVAS, then they would have to look at another alternative means of ensuring that Nigerians are not disenfranchised. I don't know what the solution is. I'm saying that the conversation must go on and it must involve not only NCC, it must also involve you know, the private sector providers of telecommunications in Nigeria, because they are also critical stakeholders. If they don't provide the mask, there is no way NCC will not go and buy mask and connect it for them. So they are very, very important stakeholders. So I am saying that we need to engage all of them in this conversation, in this debate about the state of our technology and our readiness to ensure that BIVAS works. Bivas must not be thrown you know, into the bin. No, it's a big improvement. It's a big step forward. But we have to make sure that Bivas not only works, works in the riverine area, works in the villages, and works for all Nigerians. That is the point I'm making. Okay, uh, I'm glad that uh, both of you gentlemen agree to the fact that uh, Bivas is good. And if it has come to stay, it should stay. Uh, I, I've, I've seen all your concerns, but there are... There are two things here, uh, just like Uche was asking, that is it not possible that some, some people are just doing this so that they can use, Nigerian word for it is magu magu. I like that more than any other word that, <laughs> that the English can have. Yes, but we are like, it's either we, we, are, we are supposed to choose between the devil and the deep blue sea, which means they are at par, the good and the bad are the same, or we are thinking about a greater or lesser evil. Because on the one yeah. hand, um, if the beavers work, maybe some people will be disenfranchised. Now, if they also give room for other forms of accreditation, there's also a possibility that the people that will vote will not even be the right people to vote. And yeah. they, there will be a lot of uh, malpractice within the election. So we might be left with just the choice of choosing whether... Some people will be disenfranchised, but the majority of the people, especially the ones living in the crowded areas of the city, uh, get to vote. Or we let the people who are not supposed to vote to come and vote. For instance, like the underage voters that we, they yeah. were talking about and all that, the explanation INEC gave me, gave, I wasn't comfortable about it, but hey, what do I know? So if we were to choose, do we choose a greater or a lesser evil? Which one will be greater and which one will be a lesser evil? Because it might come to that. Do we use beavers or do we abandon beavers? What do we need to choose as Nigerians at this time that we are uh, going into 2023? Let me begin with you, Mr. Otu. 
Okay, uh, thank you very much. Uh, you see, the concern you raised is um, uh, Mr. Chong Mi um, did very well to, you know, raise afresh some of these um, the fears and the concerns. Yes, they are genuine, they are germane, they are concerns Nigerians are familiar with. On a day-to-day -day basis, we see it. Sometimes they debit you, like they debited me the other day I went to the first John to buy fair, and the money was not reversed. I even called my bank. Even when they reversed it, I wasn't credited. I just noticed I did a transfer. Expecting money was money had gone out, and uh, lo and behold, I now saw that I had more money than, than was in my account which means it was later reversed. Now, uh, uh, our concern, like you have pointed out, is um, that we shouldn't go from the bad to the, or we shouldn't go from the bad to the ugly. Even if we go from the bad, the ugly to the bad, and then we we'll move to attempted good, I think for me, it will be a fair deal. The concern raised by Mr. Show me about uh, the election being tied to a day and all of that. Uh, while those postulations may be correct, the fact also remains that the Electoral Act also has given the INEC the flexibility to adjust. Like when you see the Electoral Act saying, for instance, that it is no more an error where you can come and shoot in a polling unit, cut away the ballot papers, and then, then they will say, no, let's overlook that area. The result there is insignificant. Like it happened in here, the local government in Anambra, where I was covering the election with my team. We noticed they came back the next day, brought all the polling units to centralized area, uh, some schools, about four schools in the local government, and asked the voters to go there. They provided enough security. On Monday, the election that started on Saturday was concluded. I was part of the system, and I could say that what the Electoral Act has done is to make the system flexible. The effect of 200 million Nigerians in the next eight years, four to eight years, is more important than anything. And I don't want to contemplate or conjecture a system whereby we will begin to contemplate, oh, let's do what's used the rural areas and then do 60% of what's use 60% to do what fits those in the city. You are still giving room to the same manipulations that the Electoral Act has tried to kill. I am saying that if there are no networks in those areas and we do elections in those areas where there are networks, we can try technologies, things that can, we can begin to think, of, okay, let's even, partnering with NCC, INEC, can you tell us the percentage of places where there are these network hitches across the 179,640 something polling units across the country? If we are saying, oh, let's just focus on um, places and aspects and some sections of the country and then leaving the other section to their fate, you are still telling the politicians that they can look, look, they can go to the rural areas and manipulate the system with the analog accreditation system that had made it impossible to reconcile the number of accredited voters with even the number of actual registrants in the particular world of polling unit. In Ebony State, for instance, you have 171 electoral wards, and you have a total of 2,497 polling units. Now, if you check the uh, percentage of rural populace there, as it were, you will find out that it is almost insignificant. It is, it is uh, across the 2,497 polling units in Ebony. You, you can almost say that you are sure that there could be network in about 2,000 polling units. So if you have network in 2,000 polling units, then the other number is not likely very significant to alter what could have been the overall outcome of an election in the state. That's, that's my own thinking. I do know, too, that there are more network challenges in a place like Niger, for instance, or northern states that have large expanse of lands that have um, you know, a very large uh, square kilometers of lands that can be separated almost like you can do four or five hours from the capital city to the next uh, senatorial district. These are the concerns that INEC and NCC can come to say, oh, in these areas, we are looking at what can mitigate the shortfalls. 
and then they can begin to make whole conversations on how this can be done. Okay. Uh, let's not also tie our minds to saying, oh, once on the 16th of February, uh, 25th of February, once we are done with the presidential election, we are done with it. It didn't happen that way in Anambra. It didn't happen that way in other areas where there were challenges. We can spread this election and make sure that we use this period of February, March, and even April next year to fix okay. those well, who can be responsible and accountable to us in the next eight years. Well, I mean, it's not a big deal. Yeah, Mr. Tu, I quite appreciate the way you're talking. Um, the concern of uh, Mr. Shuomi was that the Electoral Act needs to be amended before those kind of a th this kind of a thing can be done that you're proposing. And I quite agree with him. There's no time to do the amendment. But let me go to Mr. Shuomi now. Uh, Mr. Otu has, has chosen his own lesser evil. Just briefly <laughs> now, because I was asking the lesser evil or the greater evil. His own lesser evil is that we take the risk and make sure that the bimodal uh, voters' accreditation is used, the BVAS is used. Uh, and if some people are disenfranchised, it would not be as bad as if we let the system be uh, such that it can be manipulated by this political class. So maybe I, I just come to you to choose your own lesser evil. Let us know if you agree with him or if you don't agree with him very fast before we wrap up, Mr. Ashomi. Okay, my own letter evil is that um, beavers should be used. I will fully support the use of beavers, but I still think that there is a room to do an audit trail, you know, of uh, defects in our technological infrastructure in the country. It is not too late, and I think that INEC needs to work with NCC and the private operators with a view to reduce the, the defective areas uh, in the country. It's not too late. We still have a little over two months. You can install masks in different places and get people, you know, improve on uh, the telecommunication. It may, necessary, it may mean that the federal government through the NCC will need to come to the aid or to support the telecom operators or to give them some kind of tax rebate, you know, to provide those facilities, I don't think it's too late. We can still improve more on them so that we do not end up in a situation where a significant chunk of Nigerian voters are disenfranchised simply because Bivas failed uh, them. That is all I'm saying. I will go. Bivas is the least um, of all the evils, and it's better. We need to start using it. We need to try and eliminate the concerns of the APC chairman, the concerns of other party apparatchiks yeah. you know, in the country who are worried one way or the other. We cannot replace wanting to stop um, um, rigging while at the same time, electoral malpractices while at the same time, you know, replacing it with something that will undermine the credibility of the electoral process. In this case, Bivas is good. But let us do a little bit more, you know, extensive work to reduce the problem areas. That's, that's my solution, sir. Okay. To err in, on the side of caution, as they say. Well, um, like you've said, uh, at least you, you guys have agreed that Vivas <laughs> is good enough. But day. I also agree with you that um, uh, even if some people will be disenfranchised, let the people know that an effort was made. Mm. And when it got to where it got to, it wasn't because the country just felt that uh, they didn't matter, because that would be very insensitive. Well, thank you, Mr. Abiodo Shomi and Mr. Charles Otu uh, for coming on thank the program you. and sharing your thoughts. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Okay. Uh. Two political analysts. I, I'm I'm glad they agreed at least yeah. that the lesser evil. I mean, who wouldn't agree? Well, there are people who wouldn't agree. Actually, I think those are the problems that we have in this country. Uh, well, they, they may not <laughs> know that they are the problems. I anyway. mean, how how can you look at a system like Beavers and not want to try it out? I, um, he gave a very good example of how the telecommunication companies came into Nigeria yeah. and it wasn't so stable, but we're getting somewhere. Mm -hmm. uh, people at some point, two years ago, two, three years ago, people were complaining so much about the internet data. And I don't hear so much of those complaints these days. Mm -hmm. And that is because 
something has been done and we keep improving. And I feel like that is what the situation will be. You know, that, that question I asked Mr. Shomi, um, it came from a place of having lived through different years of elections in Nigerians mm -hmm. and in Nigeria, excuse me, and hearing the complaints. A lot of people do not vote at all. Why? Because they did not see electoral um, uh, um, INEC staff. They did not see electoral materials. Yeah. Yeah. In fact, it's as if nothing is even happening in their own village. Yeah, some, people some still... actually see the materials. They don't know where they end up. <laughs> I've seen, I've seen cases where, so, where an entire election was done in a room. I've seen cases where an entire election for a, a, a ward was mm. done in a bush. I've, I've seen things. I'm so you. if you have experiences like this and you hear of beavers, you will jump on it and say it is good. But what are the people who are benefiting from non-beavers, if I might use that? Mm -hmm. They know that the system without technology benefits them. Benefits These people them. might not be happy with Actually, I, I think uh, I'm going to end this way. I'm hoping that INEC is listening. Congratulations, guys. You people mm. are doing an amazing job. Mm. But I'm hoping that you guys are able to continue improving. You know, I think it was last week that Bayer was saying how that INEC offices shouldn't be locked for mm -hmm. any reason, yeah. uh, only to reopen after every four years. Mm -hmm. No, this is the reason INEC offices should remain open. These things are work on your table. You need time to improve Do mock elections things like even, the beavers. Even, exactly. You don't even need Do mock states, elections. Yeah. Do whatever you need to do, but you need time to do that. And that means you need to come to work every day like every other regular worker in Nigeria to be able to get things done. Mm -hmm. Kudos to you, Aineg, but please, after 2023 elections, maybe sometime in May, June, because you need time to recoup and rest, mm. reopen your offices and get work done. Yeah. yeah. Don't just meet in court with people who may have <laughs> been the offenders of the... Anyway, let's take another break now. And this time is for us to bring you the news. And after the news, we'll continue our discussions before we wrap up on the show. Stay with us.